TB Photo X 1.5 TFX and welcome back to another video. Well, this time we're gonna take a look at what I believe is one of Nikon's most underappreciated 35 millimeter film cameras of all times. I mean, this one I know is a great camera. This was almost one tier, this was just one tier down from the F4 and F5 cameras. It was contemporary with those two. Uh, high-end professional prosumer cameras but today uh, while so many Nikon 35 millimeter cameras are so much of a classic or have cult followings this little baby gets no love and attention whatsoever but I think it's time to change all of that because with prices being the way they are today you're getting a fantastic camera for very little money and what camera is it? Well, it's the Nikon F801. Uh, for you guys in the US, it was branded the Nikon N8008. But anyway, this is one of Nikon's most underappreciated prosumer cameras. It was made in the late 1980s to the early 2000s. It, it was a high-end uh, consumer level SLR camera, contemporary with other Nikon uh, models such as the F501, uh, the uh, F90X and the F100. And as stated before, it was also contemporary with the pro prosumer or professional uh, Nikon F4 and Nikon F5. Uh, the later of those being the benchmark for or rather the camera that Nikon used to enter the digital age, the D1 and the D1X. But enough of that. Let's have a look at the camera, shall we? The Nikon F801. Well, consumer camera, but you get a ton of, you know, pro. One of the features that are, you know, you have a depth of field preview button. I don't know if you can hear this, but a little bit stiff, but it works. <clears throat> you have a autofocus lock button here with my, that I can actuate my pinky and a uh, auto exposure lock button that I can actuate with my thumb. So that's two very high end uh, features for the time with this camera. So uh, autofocus lock and exposure lock button. Uh, some of the other features with this, uh, it's a digital, uh, you know, camera in the way that it has a micro, some microprocessing capability in it. Uh, it has a evaluative uh, 2D matrix metering mode and a 75% center weighted metering mode. So you have a command button up here, you press this button in and you use the command dial here uh, in order to change between those two um, exposure reading modes or exposure modes. Yep. Uh, it also has uh, both aperture and shutter priority mode. So you have the mode control button here. You press that down and you uh, change uh, the uh, mode with the command dial. And you will see in this little LCD Casio watch uh, uh, window, liquid crystal display window, uh, yeah, I think I've got that from Tony Northrup, he usually uh, talks about that it's a Casio watch uh, display on top, and I tend to agree, but uh, today that's retro. But anyway, aperture shutter priority. The shutter speed natively on this camera ranges between, including bulb mode, it ranges between 30 seconds of exposure up to 1 thousandths of a second. Uh, that's the maximum shutter speed this camera is uh, able to use. Uh, it also has a very standard, I would say, a flash sync speed of a maximum of 1 250th of a second. That's the maximum shutter speed with flash sync capability. Uh, it has also capability with the MF21 data back, uh, which uh, you basically take off the uh, normal uh, com you know, compartment door for the film, and you put on a data back that can actually, you know, push a little bit of information on the uh, negative itself. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, some of the features of this camera. It also has, uh, I think, three different drive modes. You can change drives between single shot, which I have on this, and I think most people using 35mm, they would use single shot today. 
but it also has continuous low and continuous high built into this camera. <clears throat> it also has, uh, as I probably stated before, multi-exposure, the ME button that you have here, uh, and the ME will go from multi-exposure, will go from up to nine exposures per frame. So that's a little bit of a cool feature. Uh, it also has three uh, different, down here you can see, you have three different uh, autofocusing modes. You have, it's a little bit of a stiff uh, switch this, but it clicks in very firmly into place. A manual, single, and continuous autofocus. So I usually keep it on single, but with the uh, continuous, that's when you can use the exposure lock button. So it's a, it's a cool system to use. <clears throat> Now some of the, uh, maybe some of the negatives, but before that it also has um, uh, exposure compensation. So you have a dedicated button between, the, uh, besides the master on off button, you have the exposure compensation button and you basically hold that in and you adjust it with the command dial. <clears throat> yeah, but uh, anyway, I can always say that there are two negatives, or rather one negative and one meh type of negative feature of this camera. The first, the negative is, there is no PC sync port on this. The contemporary higher end cameras like the F4 and the F5, they still use the PC ports for external flash sync. But this one unfortunately does not have it, but I don't see that as a huge drawback. <clears throat> Also, there's a little cover here that you have to unscrew yourself. And beside that, you don't find any threaded uh, uh, cable release port. What you have to use with this camera, if you want a off-camera release function, uh, you need to use the contemporary, or rather proprietary, Nikon two-pin uh, screw-in type uh, electronic release uh, system. But uh, anyway, you can always use the, uh, uh, the uh, self-timer feature instead if you want to do a, you know, want, if you're into doing that. And uh, also another feature, two other features that I know this camera don't have. I haven't been able to find any mirror up mode on it. And uh, it has the more professional rounded viewfinder but you have no diopter control, so for people wearing glasses, you need to have some kind of visual correction if you want to use this camera. But uh, for me, I use glasses, as you can see, and I have no problems using this camera with glasses. It's comfortable. So that's a little bit of the semi-negative features, in my opinion, with this camera. So if you're in the market for a great uh, 35mm camera, I mean, this has the uh, built-in screw type autofocus motor in the camera body. Uh, so you have access to all the brilliant Nikkor and other brands, you know, third-party manufacturers. All of those you have access to. And it's full frame. Clicks in nicely. On it uh, now I have the AF Nikkor 35 to 135 f 3.5 to 4.5 zoom lens with macro setting and also a filter thread screw in 62 millimeter rubber you know lens hood but it's a great brilliant camera and as stated you put it in you press the mode dial and you change between the different modes um, I use this in manual, and when you use this camera in manual, it's uh, really easy to use. You just put in the film, set the ISO you want to, that the film uses. If you use, it, you use black and white and you want to push or pull, no problem. Uh, and uh, then you just use the aperture control ring on the lens to change aperture, and you use the command dial uh, to dial in your shutter speed. And it has, you know, if you want to use matrix metering or uh, spot, uh, center weighted metering, that's up to you and the type of photography you're currently doing. But it's uh, kind of great uh, features. 
and uh, a few accessories to this. Um, I mean, this was my dad's old camera, so my, the price I paid for this was zero. And this was basically the camera that started me into photography. But anyway, uh, also with this camera we have this, the SB20 Nikon Speedfly, uh, Speedlight. Small compact flash unit. This is also cheap as chips on the eBay. Uh, no problem at all to get these. It takes four AA batteries. It has a PC sync port on the side. It has full manual mode. It goes between an ISO 25 to 1600. It is compatible with the SC16 power cord, so you can use this with the SD7 power pack if you want to. It has manual flash control from full power up to, uh, down to 1 16th power. Uh, the horizontal flash angle, it has three different, you know, flash filters on this. So you have normal, you have wide, and you have tele. Uh, the normal is uh, equivalent to 35 millimeter, the wide is 28 millimeter, and the, the tele is 85 millimeter. So you have three different flash uh, yeah, what shall we call them? Diffusers or whatever you want to call them. Uh, but anyway, when you have it on on normal, it has a horizontal angle of flash of 35, uh, 45 degrees, excuse me, and a vertical of uh, 60 degrees. And also on the side here, you can tilt the flash up and down uh, between negative 7 degrees up to a complete 90 degrees. Uh, some of the meh features on this. It has TTL in it. I know that's a feature that many people don't use today. Most people that use flash usually use complete manual. That's what I've heard. Uh, but anyway, if you want to use this with, with TTL, the camera has unfortunately to be set to automatic mode. So, but apparently if you read the reviews on the internet, you're supposed to be able to use this in pitch black darkness and it will still be able to give you some uh, light on the subject. But anyway, uh, it has no left to right. You can't twist this flash. It will only point straight forward when mounted to the camera's hot shoe. But here you have the solution. This is a third party Opteca uh, cold sh uh, no, hot shoe uh, flash connector. It both have you know the flash connector for the hot shoe. You have another hot shoe on top of it. And you have this uh, cord extension, so either you can stack multiple of these cables on each other to use multiple flashes from the camera, or you can have one uh, you know, flash on the camera itself and you have one that is off camera. I mean, this gives you a ton of different options, really. And it's a cheap flash cord cable from Opteca. There are a billion different brands of this. And uh, also another X factor, this is the uh, one sen, you know, cheapest chips um, flash control, you know, thingamabob or whatever you want to call it. This is basically just a cheap, you know, con remote control flash sender, you sender and receiver unit. It basically works so that you put this uh, sender on the camera hot shoe. And uh, you, co you connect uh, these uh, receivers uh, to the flash uh, units. So if you want a cheap beginner's way of controlling off-camera flash, uh, yeah, you can spring for the, uh, the pocket wizards and so on, but they are a little bit expensive. And uh, these go with AAA batteries and uh, the ones and cheapest chips you can expand this more or less to how many flashes you want uh, you have to go around and change every flash uh, setting uh, individually but it's a cheap uh, great way to uh, get into flash photography and off camera flash so basically here you have a very great little setup for uh, the person who wants to get into uh, 35 millimeter flat uh, 35 millimeter film photography and wants to do it on a budget with a great value for money camera and um, a cheap uh, usable off-camera flash but um, anyway now I would like to hear from you dear viewers so uh, is there any camera you want like to nominate uh, uh, as a great beginners uh, 35 millimeter 
uh, camera. Uh, yeah, so just drop a comment uh, in below and uh, name your your contender. But anyway, this is Tobias Bergstrom from TB Photo X 1.5 to FX, and I would like to see you guys in the next video. So take care from now on. Bye. ハイグレード一眼ニコン F801